there is a new kid in town, and that is Zach Top. Bad luck was always hanging around. Throughout the past few years, we've seen an undeniable resurgence in the classic country sound, but now there is someone new front and center ready to take over the spotlight. Sounds like the radio. There is no doubt that Zach has been killing it lately, gaining traction across social media and earning high praise for his newly released album. It's clear, people are loving this guy's music. I mean, he's already been invited to play at the Grand Ole Opry multiple times. I'm Zach Top, and this is my Opry debut. All I need to keep me from Why do people like his music? Maybe it's that steel guitar twang, that classic fiddle, or maybe just a timeless sound in his voice, reminiscent of a 90s golden era. Kentucky Bluebird. As we see more artists in the late 2010s and early 2020s bringing back this beloved sound, it begs the question, is Zach Top destined to become the new face of traditional country music and what will his legacy be? Let's find out. <laughs> So who is this Zach guy that has reflections of Keith Whitley and Randy Travis in his voice? We have to go back to Zach's upbringing first. Zach Top's musical journey began at the age of five when he eagerly embarked on guitar lessons. His instructor actually had a bluegrass background which catapulted his interest in the genre. His first meeting with his instructor foreshadowed his future musical endeavors as Zach humorously requested to learn Amarillo by Morning by George Strait. Amarillo by morning, that was it for me then. I think she told me that was a nice idea and maybe let's start with Jesus Loves Me or something and then we'll we'll work our way up to something with a key change and minor chords, so <laughs> but we learned it eventually. <laughs> this unexpected choice showcased Zach's early love for country music and introduced him to the world of bluegrass, igniting a passion that would shape his musical identity. Growing up in Sunnyside, Washington, Zach was surrounded by the sounds of classic country thanks to his parents' tape machine. In the comfort of his own basement, Zach spent countless hours listening to iconic tunes by artists like Keith Whitley and George Strait, soaking in the timeless melodies that would later influence his own musical style. Despite his young age, Age, Zach's curiosity was unlimited, and he was able to absorb all the music his parents laid before him. They uh, they played a bunch of classic country stuff around the house. That was what we we always had George Strait on. His early exposure laid the foundation for Zach's music career and ignited a lifelong passion for the genre. During his school years, Zach formed a bluegrass band with his siblings, playing alongside them for almost a decade. During this time, Zach gained valuable experience and honed in his craft. As he continued to grow, he played in multiple bluegrass bands like North Country and Modern Tradition. After high school, his parents encouraged Zach to get a degree so that he could always have something to fall back on, so he decided to pursue a college education and a career in mechanical engineering. But for Zach, his dream of playing music professionally always remained constant. So, he made the bold decision to follow his passion and drop out of college. Working in construction to save up money and to move to Nashville, Zach remained deeply immersed in the bluegrass and country music scene. But it was his path into the world of social media when things really started to change the course of his career. Posting videos of himself singing and playing guitar on Facebook, Zach's talent quickly caught the attention of music enthusiasts leading to a surge in popularity online. Among the offers and promises from various individuals in Nashville, one email stood out from music industry veteran Carson Chamberlain, who expressed a genuine interest in collaborating with Zach. Despite initial hesitation, Zach's girlfriend, who would later become his wife, recognized the potential opportunity and encouraged Zach to respond. This pivotal decision would mark the beginning of Zach's journey to success in the country music industry, setting the stage for the next chapter. So who is this Carson Chamberlain fellow? Well, he was Keith Whitley's tour manager, still guitar player, band leader, so this guy definitely knew his stuff, and now he was a producer. Zach was definitely in good hands. While still honoring his roots, he would release a self-titled album in 2022 with a handful of great bluegrass songs. But it wasn't until when him and Chamberlain started working on his debut album in the country music space and teasing singles from his latest record when things started to ramp up for Zach like something that he's never seen before. Carson has also gone on to produce many country albums for artists like Billy Carrington and Easton Corbin. But now, it was Zach's turn on his brand new album that came out on April 5th. Cold beer and country music. Hey bartender, I need me one of those long necks. Yeah. 
Damn. You could say that Zach's whole life was leading up to this release. From all the years spent in his parents' basement, listening to old tapes, to perfecting his craft with bluegrass, it led to this record in time. The musicians that helped Zach with this record definitely brought the heat. This whole album sounds great. My lucky star fell out of the sky. Right out of the gate, Sounds Like the Radio kicks off the album with an energetic, upbeat vibe, reminiscent of 90s country music. Complete with playful references to Alan Jackson. I came out crying, and it sets the tone for the album with its lively tempo and catchy melody. The chorus in particular will have you humming this around the house or playing it while you take a drive. Zach obviously knows he's leaning into that older country sound with lyrics like Back in 94, you know. So you know the rest of the songs are going to follow suit. Cold Beer and Country Music follows next, serving as a country rock anthem that embodies the essence of traditional country music. I don't need to talk. I don't need no shrink. It's the kind of song that gets people on the dance floor for sure, and it captures just the spirit of good times. Good cold beer and country music. This was actually the song Top performed at the Opry. A cool story behind this song is that Chamberlain called him one day with the perfect song idea. This would go on to be cold beer and country music. Chamberlain said, I have the perfect album title, the perfect tour name. We have to do it. So I was like, okay, uh, all right, I'll do it. And he's like, all right, so here it is. Cold beer and country music. Man, we got something here. You can make that the title of the album, the title of the tour, stick it on hats, stick it on t-shirts. That just, who doesn't love cold beer and country music? I mean, who doesn't like cold beer and country music? Speaking of liking things, I'd love if you like this video just so we can get the word out and push it to more people for those who love authentic country music. Tracks like Cowboys Like Me Do is a similar story we've encountered where a cowboy meets a lady, but his running ways are just too much to stay. And There's the Sun offers more of a sentimental and slower pace, showcasing the softer side of his voice. There's the sun, there's the moon. There's the Sun in particular is a really strong one with its heartfelt lyrics and gentle melody, and it definitely has a Whitley vibe about it that I've loved since the first listen. Blue. Dirt Turns to Gold is a heartwarming song with a great story. It offers a perspective of a son who's just tired of working on the family farm, he moves out to the big city, and he realizes that back home is truly where his heart is. Till I learn dirt turns to gold and it notably has become a fan favorite from his non-singles off the record. As we get further into the album, the kind of woman I like in Bad Luck add a cool bluesy, I might say confidence vibe to the album, demonstrating Zach's ability to infuse different genres into his music while maintaining his signature style. Keeps me coming back night after night. That's the kind of woman I like. Bad luck was always hanging these tracks are both suave and energetic, keeping people who listen engaged with their catchy rhythms. Bad Luck in particular is his most streamed song right now, so if you're new to Zach, i definitely start there. Next we have Ain't That a Heartbreak. He came home from work and saw a U-Haul backed up to it injects a dose of humor into the album with its comedic take on the end of a relationship, showcasing Zach's witty storytelling and playful lyrics. Ain't that a heartbreak? And one more song I want to mention is Use Me. His voice is just super strong on this one, and he stretches it out pretty far to showcase his range. And I'll whisper your everything I've ever wanted. It's kind of a sadder song where two strangers find solace in each other after being both heartbroken by someone else, hence the lyric, Use Me Like I'm Using You. And it just definitely supports the other songs on this record by adding a different dynamic. Use me like I'm using you. Overall, on this album by Zach, each song offers something different, yet they all come together to create a cohesive listening experience that classic country lovers will enjoy. I feel like this was a statement piece by him saying, I'm here to make noise in the country music world, and I'm here for the long run. 
But to understand why people are gravitating toward his music so much, we have to understand where we are right now in country music. It seems like we left this bro era country in the 2010s, and now we're craving something with a little bit more substance, more instruments, real authenticity, and it's working well for Zach. It makes me question, would Zach Top have the early success we've seen so far 10 years ago? I honestly don't know. That would have been 2014, and maybe he would have started a big independent movement like Cody Johnson did around that time. But before Zach arrived onto the traditional country scene, one artist that grabbed people's attention with this back to the 90s honky tonk feel with a full band sound was Midland. Whether you like their music or not, they gained popularity with a lot of their early songs like Drinking Problem, Burnout, and Make a Little. It made people realize and think, hey, Country music can sound like this too, and I kind of like it. Real instruments, steel, fiddle, which is kind of ironic when you think about it because that is what country music sounds like. Of course, there are tons of other bands that have been playing with this music style, but Midland is just one specific example. That leaves us with one question though. What does this mean for Zach? Is he destined just to be the new kid on the block and leave everyone's radar after a year or so? Or is he lined up for long-term success? Well, we know one thing. Right now is the best time for authentic country music, and people are craving it. I do think with him keeping his nose down and working hard at his craft, he's unlimited on what he's able to do. He's certainly capable of leading a brand new wave of traditional country music to those who are young. He's only 26. A lot of these guys nowadays are in their late 30s and 40s. He definitely has the capability to leave a legacy and be in the country music history books, but time will only tell. Personally, I think he will be around for the long haul, and he just won't be known as a trend in this place in time. So put your stock in him right now, watch him rise up the charts. Cold beer in country music has been receiving 8.5s, 9s, 9.5s. So it's clear that people are really liking this guy. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below of what you think of his brand new album. What do you think of Zach in general? Have you heard of him before? Is this your first time hearing him? I'd love to know in the comments below. But other than that, guys, I will see you guys in my next video. Take care.